the amazing Holland Grill. Not only do we offer our dealers and customers the amazing Holland Grill, but we've also adopted for the charcoal and wood lovers the Kamada style grill. We've gone with the grill dome. We feel it's the best quality. Our research staff and our team down over in Spencerville took them all in. We brought all different mates and models in, including the egg. This is green. It's not an egg. It's the grill dome. Don't be deceptive. This is a one of a kind. They don't make this color anymore, but they do come in five unique colors. When you're doing the Kamada grills, we recommend lump charcoal. And that's what you hear here. It's a natural charcoal. It's made from wood versus the briquettes. The briquettes are filled with a lot of fillers and they ash off too much. Prior to uh, getting this ready, we have to make sure that we clean out the flue or under the uh, fire bowl. It's free of ashes. And now I'll proceed to lighting. When you're lighting the lump coal, is very simple. It lights almost like paper. And we recommend a fire starter. Of course, we offer an electric coil if you have electric access to it. And we'll get this going and get some baby back ribs racked up on this unit this morning. I'm simply going to break off a piece of this fire starter. I like to kind of get it scrunched a little bit for a lighter or cooperate with it, which it does. Get that kind of rolling. We'll make a little groove in here for it. Get that baby down in there, let it burn for a minute, give it a little air. We've got our flue or down here, our bottom flue that provides the airflow uh, into this. While we're waiting for this to light, let me tell you a few things about this, the grill dome. It's thick, almost an inch and a half thick. It's made of Terrapeg ceramics, one of the finest ceramics in the industry. All the hardware, including this spring assistant hinge, is made from 304 quality stainless, the best. So we have a rust proof. Uh, warranty on that. The ceramic is guaranteed for life, per se. Uh, it's baked on enamel. Look at that beautiful finish on this. Comes in five colors. No longer will we get green because uh, people were distorting our whole image with this green egg concept. We don't have an egg. We do some things that are better than the egg. Our seal is a five-year warranty on the seal, which is so essential because once that's closed, the only infusion of air is from down here. So you can literally control the temperature of this. I'm going to run this for three hours at 220 once I get it lit. And once we start this lighting process, uh, I take my lump coal. This is that lump coal. We put, put a few on here. By the way, I cooked on this yesterday for about five hours, and this is the coal that I used yesterday. You reuse that lump coal. That's why people and true grill masters really love it. It's clean. It burns hotter than briquettes, and you can reuse it. So it's very economical. Get that baby set down there. Now, me being the great technician that I am, I'm going to doctor that lump coal up a little bit with some pecan and cherry blend uh, wood flake. Mm, 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 I can taste it already. I've also got a little piece of secret wood here I'm going to throw in there just to add it. And I think that's what the guy sportsmen really enjoy with this, is to be able to inflect and add variables. I like to use pecan wood. I like my fruit woods. I'll use hickory. I'll use whatever is necessary. As long as I got a neighbor with a fruit tree or a hardwood tree, when they go on vacation, man, I got all the supplies I need. So that's basically it. We'll close this down. And I've got that set where I want it. I'm going to go on and put the uh, porcelain coated rack back on there. Brush it up just a little bit. Close that down and watch our gauge. Within five to seven minutes, I'll be in the 200 degree range and I'm ready to rack some baby back ribs. That's all you have to do to light it. You leave your flue wide open down here. You've got your smoke cap and inhibitor cap here. I'm gonna open it a little bit. Uh, just natural flow of things will help that to uh, get a good draft. Okay. Okay, uh, you know earlier we lit the grill dome we adjusted the air flu. I'm, I'm right at about 240, 250. I'm okay with that because I'll tone it down. And also once I put the meat on, uh, it'll be better. I mentioned some of the amazing features of the uh, grill dome. The, the grill dome cooks at three levels. You got a level, you got your regular rack that it comes with it, and then you got accessory racks for pizza, stone pizza. I've got what we call the rib and roast rack in right now. I'm going to show you how it works. We also have an inverted rack that fits underneath the main deck. 
and so you're cooking down at this level. It's great for searing steaks. You're about a couple inches over those beautiful uh, wood briquettes, your lump coals. It's really made for great seared steaks and chops, etc. Anything else you want to put some true searing flavor into because you're so close to the, the heat. Uh, the rack I have on now, I mentioned, is the ribbon roast rack. Let me grab a pair of tongs right quick. I love this rack, and this is what we're going to use. This porcelain coat is one of the accessory racks. It sets right up on top of there. When you're not cooking ribs, you can use this same rack. Bam! There's where your ham, your turkey, your pork butts, or whatever you have. I, this will allow me, in this 18-inch large unit of the grill dome, which is 18 inches, our XL is 22 inches, I can literally cook a lot of ribs. I can cook four to six slabs with this using this rack. We'll throw a couple slabs on and let them rock and roll. I'm going to put the thick bone side down. Now if I wanted to, I could have a rack underneath here the uh, sear rack or the indirect rack that I mentioned fits on, you can put a pan or stone and that will keep you from having the hot heat just coming up through the core. It will deflect the heat, kind of like an oscillating effect to circulate that heat. There you have it. We don't need that though today because we're going to run low and slow. I'm going to monitor these ribs. They're going to come out just perfect. Bam! We'll run this, fly this baby, give it just enough air. I'll set it steady at about 220, low and slow as we say in the industry. Shut that uh, air smoke that thing down and we're ready to go. We're going to cook these for approximately two and a half to three hours or until they're just limp. We'll know. Thank you. amazing Holland Grill.